Hello everyone, Don, Seb, we're with Performance Place Sports Care, and we are the locally world famous chiropractors. <laughs> locally world famous nice. chiropractors. Today we're going over a case presentation. This was a 18-year-old uh, volleyball player that I had um, that had a, came in with some groin pain. It happened during his, or actually happened uh, while he was at the beach doing some skimboarding, but then uh, came in and was saying that it was bugging him during his game. So we went over some things to help him. Cool. Tell what did he? What else bothered him? What movements bothered him? Um, so he was hurting with uh, when we were standing up, and we went into some extension here. It would create some of that tightness through here. Um, felt better as he bent forward this way. Um, a little bit of side bending also created some um, stiffness in his low back. So he had low back and groin pain. Which one came first? Groin first. Okay. And he was very uh, set on, I tore something, tore a hip flexor. He'd seen uh, somebody else who told him he tore his hip flexor. Um, basically because of the way that he kind of, he, the skin board slid out from under his hip and then he felt oh. it like instantly. So that sounds fun. It makes sense. I mean that you would think that you know well so you're gonna go over some exercises that help out with him today right mm -hmm. so I guess we should probably give a little bit of um, uh, uh, foresight is did he improve after day one yes how's he doing today uh, he only come came in for one follow-up visit that we just progressed through, through some things and I don't have to see him anymore was he able to play oh yeah he, he was playing right after the first visit okay cool you can't do that with a tear no so this probably wasn't a tear yeah Okay, so what do you want to go through? What exercises did you do? So because of in his exam, we were seeing that maybe his, his body didn't like extension, either extension through the back or extension through the hip. We did what felt get good, which was flexion. So all I did was have him go into the child's pose. So in the beginning, say if you're having groin or um, hip flexor pain that you guys are feeling at home, I would say so come up a little bit first. And sometimes people will be a little bit fearful of this because they think flexion is going to create their issue. So slowly sit back. If you start to feel it a little bit, hang out with it for a second. I always say see if it increases as you're in this position because if it does, don't do this. This isn't for you. But if it starts to dissipate a little bit as you're hanging out here, then we can go further. Then we could go further. And then you just keep working your way into this. It just depends on the intensity of your pain levels at this point. But we could get him where you were. So elbows in between your knees there. Most people think child's pose, arms all the way out like this. We create a little bit more of an opening through here and a little bit more flexion in the hip when we put elbows in between the knees. And so I had him hang out here. We're pretty much not doing anything except for breathing into your front pockets here. And so we bought some time for about a minute. He actually would feel it a little bit into this position, but the more we hung out here, the more it dissipated. And eventually he was like, I don't feel it at all. So we hung out with that zero out of 10 pain for another 30 seconds or so. And then we got back up and we retested his outcome measures were lifting his knee like this and this extension. And so this was really weak for him. He was like, oh, I can't get it very high. I feel weak is what he was describing it as. And this was tightness. Mm -hmm. So was that still there? This was a lot stronger and he could get it higher, but could still feel his pain. And this was improving. So I guess, why do you think that worked? And the, the, the viewers might wonder, well, why would that help with a hip flexor tear? Um, so there's a couple of different things I think about, but a lot of times too, when you think about maybe if you tear a hip flexor, right, there's some sort of elastic part that comes along with the tearing of the muscle, the ligaments around the area, all of that. So that hyperextension can create it and it starts to, um, tighten up a little bit. So then we just find a way to get it to open up. We try to find some different movements that maybe you were fearful of that created your issue in the first place. As we heal with a true tear or something of that sort, eventually we got to get you back to movements that maybe you were fearful of. We show your body that it isn't painful anymore. But in his case, actually, his was less of a hip flexor issue and more of a what we would call a referral into that area, which we see a lot of that with hip pain. Yeah. Um, he did have that stiffness in his back as well, although that wasn't something he was coming in for. It's an associated symptom. The low back and hip um, always come in, or most of the times, Play a role with each other well so probably too i know that like with the mechanics of like the skim board went out most people think well what do you mean it's not but also as my leg goes out i gotta go back to extension yep. so there's there's a lot of other things happening rather than just the thing that you, it's almost like a magic show it's like you know you see what you see but you don't see the other things mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. uh what else did you do um so because we found that rounding of his spine and flexion of his hips was helping his issue um, we wanted to put a corrective exercise with it to build some support around that area. So the first one we did was a hard style plank. And so when you guys think planking, you think from the feet, a lot of times you won't be able to hold that position for very long. You start to extend in the spine and we're trying to get you to not extend through here. 
So exactly what Seb did is what I want you to not do, okay? So ultimately, yes, most of the time we try to get people into the plank and they stay real extending through here. So ultimately, Seb, I want you to pretend like there's a pool of water in your back right here. Try to spill it off the backside of you and see how now he creates a nice doming shape in his spine here. As long as he's feeling all belly wall working and he's not feeling that hip flexor at all, then we're doing this correctly. And perfect. And if that feels good for you, you're feeling like your belly is working you want, and you're trying this at home, come back up into it, make it a little bit harder. I want you to try to scrunch the material of this table in between your knees and elbows. So he starts to try to move like this, but he's not actually moving, just creating tension. Yep, sometimes that happens though. He starts to extend through here. So push me up, push me up. Make sure you stay rounded. We're trying to create more of this rounding for you. And go back down. Good. So ultimately you can keep going through this. You can do reps of it. You can hold for time. It's up to you as long as you're feeling the right things, but go to a pretty fatiguing and challenging point. That one there actually gave him most of his strength back in his hip. Yeah. So um, I know people might try to try these at home, but, um, and it's really common for people to, when they try exercises, they're like, well, I still feel my hip pain with this. I guess I should just push through it because it worked for this person that Dom worked with. Nope. Okay. Definitely not. So you should not be feeling your issue that this video is about while you're doing these exercises. Never do we give exercises that create the problem. We're trying to get a different area to work in an exercise and take the load off of the area uh, that we're focusing on. So if you're feeling that and you're trying some of these cues and it's just not working for you, don't do that one. Yeah. Um, probably important to note too, since we did talk about hip flexor tear quite a bit, there was no bruising? Nope. Okay. No swelling. No bruising, no swelling, meaning probably not a tear, although someone else might have said it's a tear and they might think it's a tear, it might not really be a tear. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if it was a tear, this might not be the same scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, what else did you do? You did one more, right? Yep, we did some side planks with him too. Okay. So, so, so core work is working, huh? Core work is working. So we wanted to then continue to just build support all the way around 360 around his spine and his hips. So yep, Seb's doing a uh, side bridge here from the knees, which is completely fine. Depends on where you guys are at. But you can also go from the feet if you're able to extend out, push through the feet to come on up. But that's pretty much what we're doing here. I want you to be in one straight line from head, shoulder, hip to knee or foot, whatever you're choosing to do. And you should feel all side wall belly working right here. You shouldn't feel that hip working at all. What I notice sometimes is when people will do this and they don't have the strength that they need, they'll be a little more rotated and flexed back and they're like, yeah, I feel my hip. Bring your belly button forward towards the camera and make sure that side wall is working the most. And you just hold for 10 seconds, come down for a little break, keep going until you feel pretty fatigued in that area and then what, retest. What if my shoulder hurts when I'm doing this? Yeah, I hate that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in that one you can play with head position number one, so as long as you're up. Sometimes people get really sloppy, they'll be looking down, they'll let it kind of flop to the side, whatever. Let's just find a nice little double chin instead. Yep, so kind of get away from my hand here and he's just bringing his head backwards. Sometimes that takes some tension off the shoulder. Um, another thing you could do is you'll see, actually go back into that one, Seb. So he's actually, his elbow's a little bit higher than his shoulder here. So maybe if you bring it under you a little bit more, that can help. Um, and then what is the one that you usually do, a support one? Uh, this one? Yeah, show yeah. that one. You can take your hand on top and just pull down and then go about it too. Sometimes that takes care of it. Um, but sometimes, like, I, I let people cheat sometimes as long as they don't drag over. Because there will be people who are just, like, so this was 18-year-old volleyball player. Like, I'm sure he's not going to really have any major like issues holding himself up, it's not a general lack of physical strength. But some people won't be able to do this, uh, so you can give them that, or you can give them a wall version. And there's endless ways to uh, regress and progress these exercises based upon your activity level, how fit you are, and we're basically looking for the most challenging thing you can still do well and not duplicate symptoms. Mm -hmm. So this is like a side bridge is like, at least for me and you, at our status right now, this is too easy, mm -hmm. right? Because you didn't even see me struggling. Right. Yeah. Uh, what else do you want to cover? Um, well, this was mainly, the, that was all we did on the first visit for this kid. Uh, he was a 6 out of 10 pain in the beginning. Um, the child's post position put him to like a 3, and then the rest of the exercises we did brought him down to a 1. He was happy with the 1. That means he could play in his tournament over the weekend, which he did. I said, if you go into your tournament, don't let it go any more over a 3 out of 10. And he was like, I stayed at a solid 1 or 2 during yeah. his like 9 games that he played. He came back, we did more things, and he was good. That's amazing. That was over the course of how many days? Since his, since his session, he played better. He came in on a Wednesday and had to play on a Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's good progress. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so if you guys want help with something like this, we're always available in Coast Mesa, California. You can see us in person or you can do virtual. Uh, a lot of stuff that we did show here that Don actually showed um, is actually very 
uh, communicable with virtual. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to good coaching. E exercises can help, but they have to be coached effectively. So if you guys are looking for help, we can help you. Uh, we also have the free YouTube channel here, which has a lot of videos if you go to our channel and subscribe. Use the search bar and search any different problem of the body that you might have, and you're surprised that we probably have 10 videos on it. So we'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to the channel and like the video.